Are you listening? Damn. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. But Peterson does a good job at recognizing the buck is uh. coming, so he's riding the wave. Kelly Slater, 2006, and he's raining big punches. Big yeah, he's hooks. got those hooks in deep and really pinning his hips down to the mat trying to get the finish here early in round one and he does and he will secure the KCFA heavyweight amateur title. Yeah, Peterson doing a really good job at controlling the position with his uh, his legs. Out of the blue corner, Thomas Peterson! Matt, I'll forgive you. Another episode of Trash Talk, TJ O'Connor with me as always, Damian the Wolverine Hill. We're joined tonight by a bad, bad man. 1-0 professional heavyweight Thomas Peterson. Trash Talk is sponsored, as always, by Valhalla Combat Sports Incorporated, Ink Shrinks Tattoo, Origin Wellness CBD, The Fighters, and my mom. Nice. How are you doing tonight, Tom? I'm doing fantastic. How are you guys doing? Doing good. We're also sp uh, sponsored by Spartan Martial Arts and James Clark Hypnosis and Sports Psychology. Uh, and now we can continue the interview. No. <laughs> yeah, dude. I um, yeah, I was just actually up there uh, working with uh, Tom. Tom is is amazing. Oh my god. Oh, a lot to a lot to take in from him when when you're talking with him. It's like, dude, I'm gonna need at least like a week long course to to study with you before we start talking this much because it, it was it was a lot to take in with him, but uh. How, how have you been? How's, how's training been going for you? Uh, have you been in since the fight? No, I haven't. But, yeah, that, that time has a lot of layers to it, man. Yeah. Uh, dude. The, <laughs> but, uh, no, I kind of – I got sick kind of after, like, you know, the Christmas deal. And then, you know, you meet everybody and, you know, you're sharing food. And next thing you know, I got a nasty cold, you know. Yeah. What do you do? How, how much uh, do you walk around at? Uh, did, you didn't have to cut any weight for this fight, did you? No, I waited at like two thirty-five, and I actually walk around at like probably two forty-five. Oh, okay. like I kind of get nervous before the fight, and whatever you know, you, you you whatever you don't eat as much, and yeah. you know, kind of the basic. Try to eat lean. I was gonna say if you were sweating and everything, maybe that might have caused or helped out uh, getting sick. But yeah, I was like, yeah, you you don't cut too much weight. Like that was one of the things for me is any time that I had fought uh, at forty-five. When I fought at 55, I wasn't really cutting too much weight most of the time. But any time I fought at 45, when after the fight, a day Get or sick. two, later, I was sick. I got a cold, even yeah. if it was summer. It didn't matter. It just stuffy nose, cough. <laughs> yeah, it was terrible. Your immune system goes down when you. I hate cutting weight, man. I hate everything about it. Yeah. Just, yeah. Luckily, like you said, not a problem you have to deal with. A uh, problem you did have to deal with, though, this last Saturday, you made your professional debut. You had a change of opponent on about 24 to 30 hours notice. Um, just for the fans that aren't fully aware of that situation, give a rundown as far as what you know happened. Well, we were preparing. You know, you, you watch your opponent like every night. I was making my wife watch with me. And, uh, and uh, you know, and uh, Shane Edmonds looked like a bad man. Like he, he had some nasty, he, you know, kicks. And he looked like he was a brawler. It looked like it would have been an interesting fight, you know, a fight that I would like to take. And uh, and uh, he uh, he backed out apparently. So Jeremy goes, he calls me up on we weigh in on Friday. He called me in on Thursday. And he he calls me. He goes, hey Tom, I got some bad news. I got some good news. Bad news is that Shane Edmonds pulled out. Uh, he goes, uh, he says car broke down. And I said, I'll, I'll buy him a bus ticket. <laughs> and then he said he missed the bus. And then uh, then Jeremy goes, uh, he goes, I'll buy you a plane ticket. You know, get on a plane. I'll buy you a plane ticket. And then that Edmonds goes, I'm afraid to fly. You know, I don't know. You know, I'm hearing this from my source, my guy, you know. And uh, so, a.k.a. Jeremy just, you know, kind of, the guy was flaky and he didn't want to, you know, he wasn't coming. The guy the guy found a way out or something happened. Who knows? But I thought that was a funny, funny conversation. But uh, he says, I got a guy. I got a BJ and he's. He's tough, and he has uh, he has like uh, like freaking forty fights or something, right? Yeah, man. 
Which, you know, whatever, you know, that's, it is what it is. He kind of, like, I texted Tom, and I was like, you got to take it. You know, it's everything set up. Like, and I sold, I sold Harmony, you know, whatever, like, a lot of tickets. A lot of my family and friends were coming out, you know, and they got to get their money back, you know, because the guy pulled out. Yeah, I saw a lot of your shirts walking around. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah a, lot, a, lot, a lot of fans, you know, a lot of friends, a lot of family. And, uh, yeah, so, like, whatever. So, it was hard to find. That BJ, he actually fought. Like, uh, I hate to pull up names right now, but he, he fought, like, a number two guy in Minnesota, and I think he's, like, number 12 in the country. And he uh, he had a draw with him one time at heavyweight, like, probably two years ago or something, and then he just fought him this year and with the unanimous decision for the opponent. But it, the fight's on YouTube, and it was a good fight. Like, it was a – like, that guy's no joke. If that, you know, if that guy's ranked number two that he pushed, you know. Yeah. BJ's I, no scout, you know. I mean, uh, having having a pro debut against him, you know, and having it play out the way it did with the opponent change and all that stuff, you know, that that that's got to be crazy. But I mean, I think it put a, a, I don't know, a huge target on your back because <laughs> me and TJ were talking about it before. Like, now, who's next locally? Like, I'm like, is, this is one of those fights that I I kind of think like, Bushi to the national scene almost right away. You know, is is that something that that you were thinking about uh, if getting a win, and especially a dominant one like that, or do you still plan on taking it a little bit slower, uh, kind of mixing around the local scene still for a little bit? Well, uh, Dan, I didn't think. I just think about the guy across me. Like, I, you know, I'm, I'm going in there. I'm just going in there. It's just a fight. That's all it is. And I'm uh, gonna go in there and you know do what I do. I don't, I don't game plan. I don't. Whatever happens out there just kind of happens. I know that it's the same. I try to keep everything the same as I do in practice. Right? I don't really think about what I'm doing in practice. I go and I spar my guys, you know. I'm not thinking about, okay, you know, what's my game plan? I, you know, I, I try to take what they give me, and then if there's opportunities, I take them, you know. Yeah, well, I, I wasn't really talking about, like, the, the game plan for the fight and stuff, per se. Like, I was like, uh, the game plan – for the career, you know, it's like, oh yeah, yeah, but yeah, no, like, uh, for it, like it, fucking, uh, I, it, this is not a bad thing, you know, at all, and I'm not trying to, basically, there's gonna, there's a target on your back now, and there's gonna be people wanting to come at you to basically, I mean, Thomas the Train, some people in some people's mind, they're gonna think it's Thomas the Hype Train. And they're going to be wanting to come at you and try to shut that down right away. You know, are you, is, is that something that you've expected from this win? Because I, I, I'm, I'm trying not to, I, I, I don't even know how I'm the best way to put it, you know, cause I'm, it, it just, it, it excites me and it, it scares me a little bit, you know, it just is, is, did you expect it so soon making your pro after your first pro fight? I mean, I, I guess, Shit, I just answered my own question. You, Your opponent changed last minute, you know, and now it's going to bring all this to you, you know. Did, when the opponent changed, did you think that this would no, happen? It didn't even, to be honest, man, you're, you're getting more hyped about it than I am, dog. Like, you're, you're, I, I, I fucking like how hyped you guys are. But, like, uh, yeah, I, I thought this, that Shane Edmonds was going to be a good opponent. But then this BJ Lacey who's got 40 damn fights. And people don't. People just see an age. People say he's forty years old. But uh, you guys there? Yeah. Uh, like you, BJ's had forty fights, and he's he's forty years old. Well, people see that he's forty years old that don't know anything. Like that he's an old, that you're not old at forty. You're you're kind of maybe past your prime, but you can still fight. And with forty fucking fights, that's a lot of experience. That's a lot of you've been in the cage. You're you're calm going in there. That guy was. That guy had a, a two-day notice to fight, and that was the calmest guy I've ever seen walking into the cage. He was calmest like, guy I've ever seen. Yes, I'll take that fight in two days. Yeah, yeah. Just, we got a we got a, a bus ticket. We got our, a car ride. You got gas money. You got <laughs> oh, and that that's the only questions you get from real fighters. That and BJ is a real fighter. Yeah, absolutely. But then I don't. I so I I took that fight. I thought BJ would be the tougher fighter of the two and i didn't think about whatever my like the national like the the ca the reaction or whatever's gonna happen i'm just thinking about i wanted to get four fights this year you know and i want to get you know that 
plan doesn't change, man. I'm on four fights, and then, uh, you know, we're going to try to make a run at the big time. But we kind of wanted to get four local fights, kind of maybe travel a little bit. But, you know, kind of we're just going to play it by ear, you know, play it by opportunity. We're not going to take any short notice fights to yeah. a big, big event is the plan. But I, I don't you know, whatever happens, happens, I guess. Yeah, well, I I think that's smart not taking short notice fights. Like I could have listened to that advice, maybe, <laughs> maybe I would have had a better record. <laughs> but yeah, I I definitely think that that's the right way to go. No, you know, uh, not to say, I mean, there's some opportunities sometimes, but because uh, you did take that the fight out in Kansas City, wasn't that a short notice? Fight? Yeah, yeah, well, that, that's amateur, baby. That's that's amateur. We got we got that all the way. We got yeah. that all the way. Hell yeah. <laughs> you got that out of the way. And, you, and you know, you talk about the, the switching of the opponents, which is always causes this thing. Do you, do you accredit that to your wrestling background, just that next guy up mentality? It doesn't really matter who the opponent is. It's more of what you bring to the table. Yeah, I, I would. I, I guess, yeah, because in wrestling, no matter what, I'm probably an hour from now, I'm, I'm wrestling somebody else. You can't, you can't study a guy. And you can and he can. It just gets in your own head. That because now I'm looking forward to this guy in the, the fifth round of the tournament, but I gotta go through one, two, three, and four guys to get to him. You know, it's kind of like, so yeah, I don't think about, it. I don't put too much pressure on myself. I'm just gonna go out there and do what I love and fight. You know, I'm, I like to fight. That's why I'm doing this shit. You know. Yeah. I feel like my questions weren't even like really questions for the interview. They were just like conversation questions. <laughs> TJ, do you do you have an interview question? <laughs> I don't right now. Do you have do you have a professional interview question since you're the professional one of the two of us? I do. I always got a couple up my sleeve. Uh, so <laughs> one of the things that I really like I wanted to touch on was obviously we've talked about it before the the length of the event and you know the fact that you end up fighting probably closer to one in the morning rather than you know when you normally expect it to be in the main event. Um, you talk about all the tickets you sold. I would say everybody left in that building when you fought had Thomas the Train shirts on. What what, what do you what's that support like knowing that you have that many people behind you that want to see you succeed at this? Well, man, honestly, when I when I walked out of that that curtain or whatever, like I didn't I didn't expect anybody to be out there. I expected just me and BJ to be in the ring and a ref, like you know. <laughs> that's like, and uh, but no, man, it's like. Uh, it's it's awesome, man. The support you can't ask for anything better. Like, uh, you know, especially sticking around till one. You know, I understand it went that far. It is what it is, and uh, but just the support is unreal. Like, and I, and I, whatever. Nobody really practices a fight at one in the day or twelve thirty in the morning or twelve whatever. You know, yeah. but uh, it is what it is. He was in the same position I was. You know, I know how to. You know, I know how to rest. I know how to. You know, my warm up did change you know so it was all it was all good man and the support is just unreal it's just unreal that people would stay that long and and it was a long time people were getting there at three o'clock and going to you know 12 30 that's pretty wild for support man yeah dude i mean yeah uh what time did you actually show up to the event were you able to watch some of the fights on the card i showed up at 5 30 and uh i watched uh ruben fight and uh against uh bobby lee yeah. and then i uh I kind of un- unplugged, unwinded a little bit. I I I don't really like it. The more you watch the stuff, the more it kind of mentally drains you. Like I'm 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 sure you guys are tired just watching it for you know what it drains you. It does. It does. You know? yeah. So I I try to kick back, you know, and just put something over my head and just unplug and tune out. Did you guys have fun watching the fights or like? Oh, oh okay. yeah. Oh yeah, dude. I I okay. Me and TJ when uh the co main Nolan Nolan Phelan versus uh Icky Nick Olson uh came out, we were super excited, but like we were so tired and drained and like voices were raspy and all that stuff. Sure. Like we just we're yelling from all the other fights, we both look at each other like yeah. And then <laughs> and then like we but that was like we would have stood up and been like, Yes, let's go, you guys, you know, been cheering like how we normally are. Yeah, yeah, yeah clapping with the guys as they're walking to the cage and stuff like that but like we were it, it was so late and i know tj was up since like what 3 a.m or something yeah because i i woke up at like 3 a.m the day before because i flew up to minnesota the morning of the fight so 
it was definitely a long day, but needless to say, I mean, like Damien said, it was kind of getting a little bit late in the night, and people that know me know I'm notorious. I'll go to bed at 10 o'clock. I don't give a damn. It yeah, goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I enjoy sleeping. So it was being late, but it felt like once I seen uh, you know, Nolan get his belt and I realized that, you know, I knew what time it was, but I realized what time it was. It was kind of like a jolt, little shot of coffee quick. And then uh, the performance you had, like I said, definitely set the place on fire. Uh, I mean, obviously you fought the way you fought, but I felt like just being a, a bystander, you were going in there to get done because you wanted to go home. And stuff. Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, yeah. uh, I was I was most excited. Uh, yeah, like you know, in the back, you're you're wishing these guys have a killer be killed mentality. You know, <laughs> like yeah. first round, either you're getting knocked out or you're knocking the guy out. You know, all your family's probably texting you, it's like, hey, it's getting late, Thomas. <laughs> uh, finish your guy right away. And you're like, well, I I guess you guys, you know, because <laughs> you got you, got to win you. Quick, you know. <laughs> oh man, that was. Yeah, you you definitely did the people that were remaining in the crowd a favor, and you definitely helped out TJ because he actually. Didn't, what time did you catch your flight back too? Because oh, oh, yeah, I, I after those fights, I went to my sister's and I slept for legitimately an hour and a half, and then my alarm went up and I had to go back to the airport at four. Uh-huh. And, and uh, I'm lucky I got there when I did because flying on December 22nd. I don't know if you guys have ever done it, no. but. There- a lot of motherfuckers there i got to the airport and like there's like the normal security area and then the lion was in there and then stretched like another block and a half away and i was just like oh cool all right i'm not gonna make my airplane this this is this is fun but i made it seen thomas peterson get his hand raised and that's all that matters we celebrate choo, choo, baby yeah. <laughs> choo choo uh, so just before we wrap it up tonight uh you know, Damien kind of talked about it, got a little passionate about it. But just from your center perspective, what's next for you, man? Well, what's 2020 going to be like? Well, like, uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully I get to see you guys more. And then uh, <laughs> Trash Talk Nation, Trash Talk Nation, baby. Worldwide, baby. <laughs> the nation and the world in the universe. Yeah, yes. everything. Hi. Michael, I hear Michael. He joined in the – yeah, he understands. He heard. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt your answer. Continue, Thomas. No, uh, I, uh, I was waiting for that kid to shadow box you or punch in the face. <laughs> he's uh, yeah, he's too tired. He knows he don't want yeah, this. Mic. <laughs> Hello? Oh, so no, here. Here. I can hear you. Yeah, all right. All right. Uh, uh, I think in uh, February 21st, uh, that LFA card we're going to aim for. Oh, hell yeah, dude. That'd be dope as hell. Yeah. Dude. You know, I think Jeremy does a fucking good job of getting that card all set up. And, you know. Uh, and, sorry, I keep looking at my phone. TJ's mom just keeps texting me. Oh. <laughs> Sick fuckers out there, TJ. She's here right now. She's downstairs visiting in Colorado. I'll get her and tell her on you. Yeah, I know. That's why I had to tell her I was like, sweet dreams. And I'm... I'm- <laughs> <laughs> but again boys it's it's always a blast um as you can hear my nights begin my nights just getting started so uh, oh, was, yeah, before we wrap it up tonight uh anybody you want to give a shout out to platforms yours i want to give a shout out to my wife uh you know she's always the number one girl you know number one supporter and uh and uh you know really holds the house down and then i got some of uh, Sponsors here, uh, Riverside Tavern and uh, Crest Exteriors and Ragun Trucking and uh, GOP and uh, Spartan actually GPO. But uh, I want to give a shout out like the this Green Ribbon was uh, mental health awareness. Uh, we kind of had a we had a warrior go down. Uh, yeah, I don't I don't know if you guys can still hear me. Yeah, yeah I can hear you. All right, we had a we had a warrior, kind of a local legend, go down on uh, recently that kind of, you know, hit uh hit the hometown pretty hard. Uh, so just if you're struggling, you know, don't be afraid to ask somebody for you know help, kind of thing, you know. Uh, yeah. So yeah, Dave dude. Peterson was his name. I mean, he was, you know, the guy was the guy was like a second dad to me. Or you know, grew up with him and. 
just uh, you know, you never know who's struggling, so don't be don't be afraid to ask for help and don't don't be afraid to reach out, you know. Yeah. So yeah, that's uh that's about it. Dude, I I love it, dude, and I'm I'm sorry to hear that, you know, and I mean I think people uh, nowadays are understanding more and more that mental awareness and mental health yeah. is one of those things like it needs to be taken serious. And I'm, I'm glad that you're, you're speaking up for it, especially with the, uh, the backing and the following that you do have and the, you continue to grow and you, you have a lot of people supporting you and you reach a lot of people. So having a, a good guy like you out there supporting a good cause, that, that's amazing. And, and I'm, I'm sorry uh that that happened man yeah no it's yeah it is you know it's too bad but uh you know if, if we can learn something from it or you know just you know whatever it is, it is you know yeah yeah dude. thank you thank you for being on the with us tonight thank you for sharing the time thank you for sharing the the fun stories thank you for having a conversation with me and being interviewed by tj <laughs> you know it's, and- always, <laughs> it's always a pleasure to be with you guys man Oh, yeah. wait. I'm sorry for my internet connection. Oh, no. Are you listening? Damn.